Welcome and thank you for joining us today. I'm Stuart Smith, the CEO of smallcapvoice.com, and I'm excited to be hosting this series of interviews with Matesco Incorporated. They're a publicly traded company under the ticker symbol MITI, as well as with The Good Clinic. You can learn more about The Good Clinic at their website, thegoodclinic.com, but they're a wholly owned subsidiary of Matesco NA LLC, and The Good Clinic plans to build out a network of clinics using the latest telehealth technology with nurse practitioners operating as its primary healthcare provider. And this dovetails very nicely into the business model of Matesco, who's a leading operator of wellness clinics that combine technology and customized personal care plans. Now today, we're lucky enough to be joined by the CEO of The Good Clinic, Michael Howe. Michael, welcome. How are you today? Great, Stuart. Thank you for having me. Appreciate I being here. Absolutely. Thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to speak with us today, Michael. Let's start off with who you are. Tell us a little bit about your background and what brought you to the Good Clinic. Sure. My background is grounded in consumer product businesses, consumer marketing, branding. Started my career at Procter & Gamble. I uh, spent time as a key executive at Kentucky Fried Chicken and then was CEO of Arby's, the roast beef chain. Uh, from there, I was asked to uh, participate in the national expansion. So I was assigned the task of expanding Minute Clinic nationally from its startup uh, kind of positioning. Mm -hmm. So I was CEO of Minute Clinic and grew it from 19 clinics in two states. In three years, we had 530 clinics in 27 states. Sold it to CVS and uh, have been helping small companies grow and prosper since. I joined Minute Cl or shit. I joined the Good Clinic in uh, 2018 uh, with three other founders to form the concept, and we worked about two years getting it worked out. Uh, we met the executives at Matesco, Larry Diamond, and really liked the relationship, and so we became part of the Matesco organization in March of 2020. And so we have since then been refining the concept, designing the clinics, and have opened our first clinic in February of 2021. Outstanding. Well, thank you for your background. And clearly, we can see you've been brought on to replicate what you've done with the Minute Clinic, as we see on the Newswire from a Tesco using that ticker symbol again, MITI. The company has now been growing its footprint. And I'm assuming uh, that was a fair assessment that your plan for the company is to expand it uh, regionally first in your area there in the Midwest, upper Midwest, and then branching out from there. Is that a fair assessment? Yes, actually, we've got the, uh, the, the first clinics are being set up in Minnesota, mm -hmm. but we are then identified uh, three other beachheads that will uh, open up. So we are also have nine sites under negotiation in the Denver market. Uh, we'll be looking to move on from there to Arizona and then also Florida, creating the first kind of establishment of the brand and then growing from there. So we really are looking to go to a national concept with 50 clinics, new clinics built by 2023 in those four markets. Outstanding. Well, listeners, I think it's important for you, listeners and viewers, I should say, it's important for you to take your time to do the due diligence on the public side of the company and then look deeply at the good clinic as well. Uh, and I say that, Michael, because I want to ask you this question. It now seems to be the right time, obviously. The business model for Matesco and the Good Clinic and the rollout plan you just touched on right now, uh, it seems very appropriate. And of course, I'm referring back to what we faced in 2020 as a country and as a worldwide society, having cutting edge technology, telehealth, having a friction-free environment with your good clinic. Uh, I'm taking, I'm coining a phrase from uh, Bradley Case yesterday. Uh, again, reducing that friction, reducing that stress. We're going to need that these days. Uh, tell me how you feel the business model. Is this the right time for it? I think it's the perfect time for it because it's a, 
a confluence of many factors. One is first the access problem we're having with primary care. You know, right now the American Medical Association tells us they're missing about 25,000 primary care providers. So right now people are having anywhere from um, 30 days to 120 day wait to get in to see their primary care provider. The second piece is a dissatisfaction with the experience within primary care. You know, our research tells us about 87% of people would change primary care providers if they could get a better experience and about 91% would change if they could be more convenient. So right, you have a consumer demand, you have a consumer dissatisfaction, but you also have the criticality of primary care itself. You know, there have been a number of studies validating the importance of a primary care relationship. So for every $1 that's invested in primary care relationship, you're saving about $13 in unused healthcare costs down the line. So it's a great return for the consumer, the better experience and better access. Then you max that with the need for telehealth capabilities, which is integrated into every one of our clinics. You have a, the perfect kind of launch pad for the concept of the good clinic. Well, and we got a chance, as I had referenced before, to speak to other members of the team and the board of directors. Again, listeners, doing that due diligence, it's not often you're going to see a startup company, publicly traded company, with this kind of management team. I mean, just your background, Michael, as impressive as that is, you know, you've surrounded yourself. Bradley was very impressive yesterday. Uh, the board is impressive. We've had a chance to interview Larry Diamond. What impresses you the most, though, about the team you've assembled and you've surrounded yourself with? You know, it's, it's hard to really isolate it uh, down to one thing. As you said, I think it's a, a great match between experiences, commitment, and passion that people have for delivering the vision of the good clinic and really being part of improving the, the access and the quality of primary care in the United States. So it's, it's hard to isolate any one thing, but it is a great match in terms of this early stage development for the company. Well, you've given us a lot of good reasons why primary care and building out this model is so important. Another thing when I read about your company that's very important, and, and we heard me say at the outset, technology, cutting edge, cutting edge technology. Talk to me a little bit about how you see these new digital health, digital medicine, telehealth initiatives and marketplace technologies coming into the forefront based on, you know, COVID shown a light on this, but it was, it was there long before that. Yeah, you know, one of the things that many of the people watching this may think, well, telehealth is nothing new. It's been around 20, 25 years, right? It has never really been embraced by healthcare. Mm -hmm. COVID if there was one thing, good thing that came out of COVID, it was an appreciation for the value and capability of virtual care, of being able to provide telehealth capabilities. But most organizations have it as an adjunct. So it's a separate business within their healthcare systems. We are building our clinics from the ground up based on technology, telehealth being one of them. So every consult room, every exam room, has the capability to provide either the physical visit or the virtual visit in the same footprint, the same technology. So we've, we've invested into the concept of integration of virtual health and physical health. The second piece is really leveraging digital uh, technology online to make the experience better, to give consumers a better access to their medical records, to appointment setting, to communication with the provider. It, everything that a consumer is looking for in their e-experience dealing with organizations is being built into the good clinic as well. So yes, technology is a cornerstone of the quality of the experience and the quality of care that will be provided. And I love what you said there though, Michael, is that you blended this. This is not going to intimidate people 
I'm 50 years old and I'm, I've been brought up somewhat with tech. I've got young daughters, so that's helped out a lot. But, you know, you get to 65, 75, these folks may not be as readily accepting of some of this technology. You've integrated both, both the physical and the tele and the, the apps and everything else so that everybody can feel comfortable. That's really important in these times because we know some of the most people, the people at the most risk would be those people in those upper age groups. So let me ask you a philosophical question then. In that regard, is Metesco and the Good Clinic providing a societal good to the society at large here in the United States and where they plan to make their footprint? Yes, I, I believe it is. And you know, we can go back to our discussion of the primary care access problem and look at that through the lens of the importance of primary care and a longitudinal relationship. But now we want to enhance it even further in that we want to provide not just the expertise of healthcare, which we will, but we also want to provide the empathy of the provider. Engage the patient. We're not talking about sick care. We want to take it from sick care into a partnership between the, the provider and the patient so that the patient gets the time they want to ask questions, to clarify what's going on, to express concerns. We want a, the patient to understand also through education how they can make better lifestyle choices to get the most out of healthcare and improve their quality of life. So in terms of the investment we're making, yes, we think we're gonna add a significant value to the American society and to the quality of the healthcare system by redefining primary care from an access perspective, as well as a breadth of perspective. So we'll be adding behavioral health. We'll be adding some dermatology services. We'll be adding things like nutrition training and dietitians and help the consumer understand how to get the most out of the relationship and their time with a good clinic. Well, once again, we are speaking with Michael Howell. He is the CEO of The Good Clinic. Go to thegoodclinic.com. Go to metescoinc.com to learn more about both companies. Ticker symbol one more time, M-I-T-I. Michael, thank you so much for your time here today. Appreciate talking with you. I know you've got a lot on your plate, so it uh, means a lot to us that you made time for us today. Stuart, thank you very much. Really enjoyed it. Have a wonderful week, Michael. Thanks again.